This is a 97 F250 7.3 diesel uh, with a ZF5 uh, manual transmission. And we're going to replace the clutch and the flywheel. So we're gonna work from the top down to get the transmission prepped for removal. Uh, the first thing we've gotta do is pull my carpet back and that'll expose the cover and, and the floor that uh, you need to remove in order to get to a lot of things. So in order to do that, we've gotta pull this shifter assembly off as well as the four x four shifter assembly. So you can see there's some screws there. And then uh, once that comes off, we'll locate the screws for this cover boot. And then those two will be removed where we can pull the carpet back. It didn't take long to find our first problem. Um, the holes here, of course, are filled with garbage. So those are gonna have to be blown out in order to find the screw heads in order to take these bolts out. So we're gonna do that. And this enough room to find them. I think that might work. I'm going to try to get on that one and remove it. So these boots are very hard to come by. If you've got one in decent shape, you're going to want to keep it in decent shape. So I recommend that you're real careful on removing the boot from the shifter in both applications. So I'm just running a little bit of oil around the shaft so that this thing can slide up um, this one more importantly these are very hard to come by once you get the boot up a 13 millimeter socket will remove the bolt that holds the shifter on next you can start working on the screws that uh, hold the shifter boot on there's one on each corner next you got two t40 screws that are holding the shifter to the uh to the top of the transmission be careful with the boot. Um, be just real gentle raising it up and trying to get to that top bolt. Now either bag your bolts and mark them or put them back where they belong. I have forever put them back where they went, or came from I should say, and due to that I don't have to find them. So if you put them back where they came from, they'll be there when you need them. Shifters are off. Now we can pull the carpet back. And to pull the carpet off, or back I should say, you're going to have to pull these quarter panels loose. Be really careful under here. This one is attached. Now it's broken off. If that screw holds the top section on, you can't find these anymore. They're all broken, so be careful. If you're lucky enough to keep that section that will stay up underneath there, you're in pretty good shape. Um, and then you have to come down and take your uh, rocker panel cover off. Again, with the screws, they're going to be buried. You have to pull them out before you get your screw head in there. If you have any debris in there, you're going to strip the screw, and then you're screwed. You're screwed. Now is when you discover that the front seat's got to come out. So go back and do that. This seat system is on a pan, so we've got four bolts. There's two in front, one on each uh, end, and then there's two in back, uh, parallel with these. These are 15 millimeter. Right, instead of actually pulling the seats back, you can just pull all four bolts out, lift it off the back bolts that are going straight up vertically and then just tilt the thing back and then you can jam the carpet up underneath the front of the uh, the pan for the seat and that gives you access to everything you need to get that cover off. The hump cover consists of nine um, eight millimeter bolts. If you happen to have a multi chisel tool like this one um, it's perfect because you're going to have to try to dig all this stuff out of here if it's brittle. Uh, this transmission was torn into um, probably about 150, 200,000 miles ago. So this is not factory stuff. So this is coming up really easy. Uh, you, you're probably gonna have to fight this and you don't wanna damage this pan. So getting a wide tool like this that can get in here and get this material out, this sticky material that acts as a seal, you're gonna have to go back and replace this when you put this cover back on. So you have to find this stuff. It's either in a tube or in a uh, like a string, uh, they use them on body panels. Anyway, work this thing up. This has the nice little sharp tool to get in there and also this piece to get in there if you need to. So this is a real good tool to remove this without doing damage. Okay, the top is ready. Uh, we've got access now to everything we need. So looking up underneath here, we've got a bolt, multiple bolts up underneath them you're gonna have to get to. So I wanna see if I can pull this heat shield off from underneath. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it and I'll show you underneath what we need to deal with next. 
Okay, in order to get to everything, I'm gonna have to pull this, um, this shield off that protects the transfer case. I'm gonna remove the transfer case. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bear with me. I'm gonna try to remove the transfer case with those bolts right there, those bolts. And that way it's gonna be less weight that I have to deal with pulling this transmission out. So when I do that, I've gotta of course pull my drive shaft off so that will come off before the transfer case. Um, I'm probably going to try to just set that out of the way and maybe zip tie it to the frame and then pull the transfer case off after I drop that shield that will allow me to remove the transfer case down. Guard for the, um, the guard for the transfer case it, it will be four 10 millimeter bolts. So Murphy's Law has found us and this bolt is stripped on the nut plate that's attached to the frame. So um, what we're going to do is we've taken the other side off and it's putting weight on the shield. This bolt is out so I've got to use a hand tool and I'm going to use the weight to allow that bolt to kind of grab the threads. And sure enough it's working. So if you run into that problem you can just use the weight of the shield instead of destroying the bolt. So before I start getting into removing the transfer case, I have a uh, switch connector here that is gonna have to come off. So I can either remove it here, which is, a, I think, a better idea than disconnecting it here on this connector. Um, although, if I leave it here in place and disconnect it here, I'm gonna protect those pins. So that's the direction I'm gonna go, I think. Because I don't wanna mess that up. So I'm gonna disconnect it here. Before we can go much further, we've got to get rid of the rear drive shaft. So um, this is a 12 millimeter, but you've got to use a 12 point socket or a 12 point open or box end wrench. Um, these things are really hard to get off, especially if you've got a north car that's all rusted up. So I'm going to take those four bolts out of the drive shaft and I'm going to take the carrier bearing loose from the frame. And that should give me, hopefully, enough room to pull this off. Actually, the carrier bearing might need to come off. Might not need to come off. I'm going to try it without pulling the carrier bearing. That might just drop out of place. But otherwise, I will have to pull the carrier bearing loose. So luckily, after taking the four bolts off and shaking it pretty good, it just popped loose. So I can move on. So this is a it's supposed to be a 13 millimeter, but I'm actually finding that the half inch wrench fits just as poorly on it. So I'm going to use a 13. Um, I've decided to take the front drive shaft out because I want to check the U-joints and just make sure everything along this drive line is in good shape. So um, this, it'll also get it completely out of my way of this cavity that I need to, to drop the transmission anyway, which means this big bar along here is going to have to come out, so that might as well go too. The bolts out. Um, but this thing will not come out because it's in here too tight. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wire, safety wire, this end of the shaft in place so that when it does fall, it doesn't go anywhere. And then the section back here where the uh, transmission mount is will drop onto that. So that'll make it from, safe from getting damaged if it hits the concrete. And then I'll pull the shaft out. So this piece here is a link between the um, transmission mounted uh, 4x4 shifter and the transfer case uh, arm. It looks like it just props, pops off, so I'm going to pop that off because I've got to separate the, uh, the transfer case from the um, transmission in order to drop it. So that's the next step here. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove these torques here and on the other side up in here to take this um, shifter housing off because I can't get to a, this bottom bolt down here to take the transmission loose from the transfer case. Okay, so I've abandoned the idea of dropping 
the transfer case off the transmission. Um, it's going to be more work than it's worth. I was trying to do that to get rid of the weight, so I've changed my mind. Now I'm working on the hydraulic clutch cylinder. I'm going to pop that off, uh, pull it out of the way, and wire it so it's not going to be in my way, and then I'm going to work on the next piece. Okay. In order to get this off, you've got to have one pry bar prying this up, right? And another pry bar prying this out. So I can't do that with one hand, so I'm going to have to pop this clip off and then the cylinder, uh, not cylinder, but the, the actuator of the uh, hydraulic clutch system can be wired up out of the way. Okay, <clears throat> now that the clutch uh, actuator is out of the way. Um, this is the thing that it pushes against right here and it sits inside that little thing that it was clipped to. So it pushes that and that actuates the clutch. I noticed this was torn so I'm going to replace that when I get the transmission down. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is pull this pan off. Um, these are missing on a lot of these 7.3 FC5s because people just don't put them back on. Uh, it's got to come off because around here <coughs> need the space for the transmission to move around so that's coming off and then we'll start working on the mount bolts oddly enough these are 3 8 inch i don't know why um, we do not have one up in there by the starter side we've got three two on the bottom and then you've got one up there that should take them all off so one of the reasons that we're replacing or taking this transmission apart to replace the clutch is the clutch was worn out, but also the ring gear on the uh, flywheel is damaged and these teeth are not catching the uh, starter. So when it gets to this point, uh, the starter won't engage and turn the flywheel. So what I have to do is I have to put it in gear and get out of the vehicle and rock it back and forth until this flywheel turns enough to catch one of the teeth. Uh, which is a pain in the butt to do, but it's a hack if you get stuck in that situation. So the uh, pressure plate, i.e. flywheel, uh, or rather it's a pressure plate, the flywheel and the ring gear, of course, will be replaced with the clutch system because they're in kit now. Back in the old days, we used to take the pressure plate, um, excuse me, the flywheel, and we would resurface it where the pressure plate and clutch attached to it. But now we don't do that anymore. We just throw them away and get new ones. So that's the goal here. Okay, working our way around to the other side of the transmission, we're gonna have to disconnect the starter. Um, uh, electronics here, I've already disconnected the batteries. That's the first thing you should do in every case working on a vehicle. And then we're gonna take these bolts uh, that hold the starter onto the uh, transmission uh, bell housing off and we're gonna set this uh, aside out of the way. Um, do not screw with these unless you've got the battery disconnected. You will arc these every time, almost guaranteed. Okay, I don't think you can even see these, but here are two top bolts up inside here. Uh, two on the side, on each side. Anyway, you're gonna need a U-joint to probably get up in there and get the angle right and take that out. The six uh, 18 millimeter bolts that hold the transmission bell housing to the ring gear housing are off and out. <coughs> I'm going to take <coughs> the um, two bolts that hold the bottom of the transmission to the uh, support frame support. Those two come off, and I need to put these back on to protect those bolt heads because this thing's coming down on the ground. So once I get this large um, support beam off, there's two bolts here and two bolts there. They have nut or bolt heads on top, so you got to hold those down. Um, it should come out. You shouldn't have to take these off. Uh, you may have to manipulate it a little bit, but worst case scenario, you're going to take those off in order to get this beam off. Okay, I went ahead and decided to take the driver's side um, frame support loose. That allows me to move this around. But you gotta first take all the weight off of the um, uh, crossbar that the transmission's sitting on. So you gotta jack the transmission up all the way to where it's 
touching the bottom of the cab. And that will give you enough room to hopefully pull this thing out in one way or the other. Probably not. So now I get to go take the other side off, the other one of these. Okay, from here it's just a matter of trying to weasel the thing out of there. Got a nice gap here, so it's coming out of his spline. I just gotta work on lowering this end a little bit, very slowly, while pulling or prying that front section off. And hopefully this thing won't come crashing to the ground and I've got it balanced properly. We'll see. So I've run into a problem. Um, transmission's hitting up against my three inch down pipe. So I've got to disconnect this exhaust section and see if I can get it to clear. I'm gonna do that while I'm supporting the transmission very well because I don't want it coming down once I pull this pipe off. Okay, now we have the transmission out of the way. It came out pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna spin around here. It's basically just sitting now behind my vehicle, under my vehicle, out of the way. That didn't come crashing down or anything. It's going to be a bitch to get that sucker back up in there. All right, so what happens next is I've got to pull the pressure plate off. This is where it gets heavy. Um, that's going to be the heaviest part, though. Um, going to look at everything while I'm here. Look at that. That's just fried, so my starter is going to have to be replaced. Um, that's because of going up against these broken teeth so long. It's just in bad shape. And uh, once I get this off, I can measure it. I can figure out how to um, order the right heavy-duty clutch. This was a South Bend heavy-duty clutch, and it was a booger to push in. Uh, I like that a lot about this truck, that it has such a massive clutch on it. Um, with this ZF, and this is the ZF that is the, let me see if I can find it. I'll have to find the data plate for you in a little bit. But this is the heavy duty one. This is the one, oh, the data plate's gone, look at that. Totally gone. Anyway, there's two ZFs and this is the one that's the heaviest, dutiest, if I can say that. Um, it's built like a freaking brick house. When I first bought this truck, it had some rattle in the transmission and I ran it 30,000 miles with that rattle and then I finally decided to check the fluid and it was empty totally empty of ATF. So I filled it back up, it quieted down, and just run 150,000 miles since. So these things are brick houses. So next big phase, now that the transmission's out, is to pull the pressure plate and the flywheel. And um, the flywheel, of course, attaches to the back of the crank. So um, then I can order me what I perceive to be the one that replaces this one because that's my goal, is to put that same super heavy duty clutch in this. Um, this particular ZF, I don't know if the other lighter weight ZF is the same, but this one has a very low granny gear for one. I don't even use first gear. When I start off this truck, I start off directly in second. The other component you're going to want to replace is going to be this throw out bearing. I don't even know how this one comes off. Tell you the truth, um, but I'll figure it out. It's probably pressed on, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, but that bearing there rides up against that pressure plate surface, so that's going to have to be replaced as well. Okay, okay, pressure plate is uh, off and flywheel remains. So now I got to take out these bolts and then the whole thing will come off. There's a pilot bearing in here that of course needs to be part of this whole replacement uh, and that should be it. Okay here's the clutch and you can see that there was just almost nothing left of it. Um, served me very well but there's just almost nothing left of it. If I would have gone much further I would have been hitting rivets. So this was a very good time to pull this off. The other side, same thing, pretty much worn out. The surface of the pressure plate 
still looks really good, but of course I'm never going to use a, another one when it comes with a kit. So uh, I believe from my research some time back that the clutch kit comes with pressure plate, flywheel, and the clutch assembly, um, pilot bearing and throw out bearing as well. So I'm going to go ahead and divorce or separate the Borg Warner 4407, there's a 4406 as well, from the ZF5. ZF5 weighs about 185 pounds because this is the 47, which is the bigger one. Um, the 42s are probably about 10, 15 pounds lighter. But the uh, 4406 or 4407 is about 120 pounds. So if I separate that, it's going to be a lot easier to put this thing in. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to remove these six 13 millimeter bolts that go around the nose cone from the transmission that connects to the transfer case. I'm not going to bother taking this off with those Torx heads. Um, it doesn't really do me any good. It gives me a little more space, but it's just something else to put back on. So I think I can go ahead and separate this and um, make it work. To separate, you'll want to use... Um, a knife or something thin to get the two pieces to begin to separate and then stick a screwdriver in there and work it as well and then you'll have to get a pry bar and start to work primarily the bottom here because that's the pinch point where the weight of the transfer case is bending down so kind of work that and once you get it off the shaft um, go ahead and slide the unit out and uh, take a look at it inspect it make sure everything's good Replace what needs to be replaced, but you will definitely need to replace the seal between the cone of the transmission and the transfer case.